Hello. Hello, you alright? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, all good. Let me just plug in. I think my uh, getting my mic working properly. There, there we go. Perfect. How's things? All good, thanks. We're well. When I was doing all these interviews, like my first question was always, "How's quarantine going?" But we're kind of coming out of it now, <laughs> it's coming so up, it's not so yeah. bad. But how did you get on? How how was the last couple of weeks for you? Yeah, it's a bit like anyone really, a bit up and down, and um, yeah. But I've been back to work. I've been doing my PT and stuff, so I've been in Great. the park, got a suntan, so I can't complain. Good stuff. Glad to hear it. Well, what's your setup like at home? Do you have like a bag set up? Do you have anyone that you can spar with or do a bit of pad work with? No, nah, just no, nah, none of that. Just on the park, just over the park. To be honest, I've been at the start of lockdown. Like, well, I've I've had a long break since my last fight. I've had a had a long break out of the ring and out of training. Yeah. And at the start of lockdown, I was like, right, that's it. This is my time to get back on it. Started training, yeah. and then <laughs> two, three weeks went on, and then like just yeah, just lockdown took over, and <laughs> I was just eating and drinking and doing whatnot and then uh yeah so now I'm a bit like I've gone back to work so um I'm I'm feeling like yeah I'm good to go now get back on myself yeah I think we were all like that I think even for myself like the start of lockdown I was like training twice a day I was doing all these home workouts I was like I'm on it I'm like I'm gonna be ripped coming out of quarantine and then you're like there's a bottle of wine in the fridge and you're like oh go on (laughs) there you go that's it I think everyone's been the same to be honest yeah yeah, totally. Um, but listen, let's talk about yourself. Obviously, as you said, it's yeah. been a while since we saw you in the ring. There was lots of talks yeah. of, you know, has he retired? Will he come back? You know, I'm yeah. sure it was very frustrating for you. Um, so obviously the quarantine wasn't a great time for, for you know, boxers or for fighters in general. But yeah. have you done a bit of thinking in the time? You know, has it made you more eager to get back in there? Yeah, definitely. I've, like, obviously... The last couple of years of, of like, well, it's like a year and a half now I've not boxed. I think December 2018 was my last fight, and yeah. obviously I got beat. And then the coming off, I was coming off a win, um, the comeback from the European title out in Spain. I, I got beat, and then yeah, it just it just says it was a bad time for me. And after coming off such a high, like I was obviously uh, won the British title outright, and then uh, going on to then looking like I was going to be fighting Jeff Horn for the world title and yeah. that all like went to pot and went downhill. Everything from then really, I was like cursed from then. Cause after that, um, yeah, just, yeah, it just all went wrong really. But listen, it's life. It's one of them. Um, it, it, what's, what's meant to be will be. Um, I've, I've had my time off. Uh, I needed a break anyway. So like, I, I just, I needed to have a break. And then, uh, yeah, listen, there, there was, obviously all these rumours and talks of about me retiring, but I never once said like, made it public or anything that I was retiring. I just like wanted to break and see where where my head was at. And that's exactly what I've done. And I I miss it so much. And even being back in the gym and doing the PT stuff and that, I I miss being in the gym. I miss, I miss it. And if, if I didn't have that feeling and I didn't like walk past a mirror, walk past a bag and start hitting it or shadow boxing, then I know, I know it would have been time to, to say right, that's me done, and concentrate on, on, on that side of things and working, and but no, I, I miss it. I think about it every day, and I, I wouldn't want to live with regret and then retire and think, mm. oh, what if, and only if I had it like another go at it. Or so yeah, I've had, I've had it like, listen, I've had too long off to be honest. I should have been back a long time ago, but like I say, what, what will be will be, and and I always believe things happen for a reason, and I think. Yeah, I feel hopefully lockdown can, can pass and I can get back in the gym and start start getting on it. It's a funny one, isn't it? Because like I mean, especially when we look at like the fighters who kind of if if we if we imagine it being like the conveyor belts, you know, where yeah. like the fighters they turn pro or they get the big signings like yourself, Frank Warren, the big stages. And then it's kind of like a conveyor belt where where fans and the boxing community just wanna see them progress, be tested. And then, yeah. like, as soon as that something is, is, is put in the, you know, something happens where there's a loss or they take time off, like, like what you're saying, immediately yeah. people just jump to, they've retired, that's it, they're done. <laughs> they, it's like there's no yeah. mercy in the sport at all, so there's not. That's it. And it's like, um, it's like, I'm sort of thinking, like, the forgotten one, like, do you know what I mean? Because yes. there's all these new fighters coming through, these young, fresh, hungry fighters coming through, but there's, like, 
they seem to forget. Do you know what I mean? They they don't realise mm-hmm. what I've been and done and what I've I've achieved. And like, I've had thirty one fights. I've I've achieved like British Commonwealth, WO European, uh, international. But it's been from the bottom up sort of thing. And I've had some mm-hmm. good learning fights and and been there and done it. Do you know what I mean? Box for the European title. And uh, I think that yeah, people soon forget. Do you know what I mean? So when mm-hmm. I come back. I think um, yeah, it'd be good. It'd be it'd be good. There's some good fights out there. I mean, w- as we're talking about with you know the being forgotten, and the, as soon as one generation finishes, there's another generation that's ready to take over, and it's it's yeah. never ending. And that's the beauty of the sport. It's the beauty of sport in general, but it's also such a negative as well. So, yeah. w- why continue? Do you have to have that love for boxing? Could you do yeah. this and not be in love with it? I I would if listen if I stop now I, I'd regret I'd regret it and mm-hmm. I don't want to be I don't I'd never want to live with regret. Um, listen, even if I, if I come back and it wasn't meant to be, and then I didn't achieve what I, I want to achieve, then I could say at least I tried. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I, I'm not that sort of person. I'd hate I'd hate to to then live with regret and think only if and what if and do you know what I mean? I'm not getting you no know, younger. I'm still fresh, do you know what I mean? People think age is a thing. I'm 32, but people be like raising their eyebrows, thinking, "Oh, he's old and that now." But I'm, I'm, I'm fresh. Looking through my career, I've not had like been in wars or big hard yeah. fights. That's not my style of fighting. And uh, I think, um, yeah, I'm fresh. This this break has done me really good, to be honest. I, even though I've been my, my last three fights have been beat twice and got stopped twice. Even like being stopped, it's not like I have got like pasted round the ring it was quite over quite yeah. quick do you know what I mean so yeah it's, that's that in a sense is is a good thing do you know so yeah it's just one of them in terms of um because I mean to win all the titles as you said you, I mean just so many accolades uh, in your career to date and to go on such a win streak and then to have the losses in terms yeah. of the, the your ego or your sort of like we'll say the 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 spirit the fighting spirit in you how was that dented or yeah. was it after the loss? Yeah, the, the, I was on a good run. I was on a real good mm-hmm. run and going up to to the European to the European title fight. Everything was going really well. Then I was I was like flying in the gym, and then the fight got put back. I think a month because uh, Laraj got cut in sparring. Yeah. So. The fight got put back a month, so that I think. Listen, I ain't even this. No, no excuses. I lost. I lost. But that was like a, that. That was, I was so gutted because I felt like I could have beat King Kong. Like the way I was feeling in yeah. training, everything was going so well. Like, everything was went so right, and yeah, he got the cut. But listen, it's the sport we're in. It happens, and they 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 put it back. I'm sure it was a month. I'm sure he got put back a month. So. Um, it got put back, and then it was just like it was so hard because I was right there. It was, it was like I think we was coming. I just had my last spot. I think coming up to my last spa, I was on the week of having my last spa. Everything was done, so it was one of them. And it got put back a month, and then like a few things on leading up. I was I was out. I flew out, and then on on I think the Wednesday or the Thursday, like a few things happened like at home, like personal things and. Yeah, it was just, I think it was one of them. I, I was fine. I'd say I was fine. But to be honest, I think it was like subconsciously in the back of my mind. And mm-hmm. I was thinking about that and things was going on. And yeah, it just, it, it was just right. It was like, it was over before it even begun out there. It was just like yeah. a big blur. Do you know what I mean? Like, and again, listen, I lost to the better guy on the night. But every, like everyone knew who, who knew me knew that wasn't me in the ring. Do you know what I mean? That wasn't. Mm-hmm. It wasn't me. I come out. I just it just wasn't me in there, and then and it showed in my performance. And then obviously that that happened. And then I had a bit. I had a bit of a break after that, but it was one of them. Do you know what I mean? And then come back. Had a good win. Had a had a very good win. Uh, beat a guy I'd never been stopped before. Got a good stoppage. I think I stopped him in the third round. So I was buzzing. And then I thought, do you know what? Another couple of wins. I'll be back back to where, where I was, do you know what I mean? Hopefully I can maybe get a rematch or something for the European title. Then I think um, we was waiting to get an opponent for 
uh, the fight, my my last fight, and it was just like so so many opponents fell through, and mm-hmm. it was like so hard. I was training, I was in a camp for, for like, training for someone I didn't know I was fighting. It was so hard, and then I think the last minute they got uh, Ramirez, the guy, obviously the guy I boxed, and it was for a title. Then it wasn't going to be a title because we didn't have an opponent. Then it was was wasn't. Then just so many things happened. Then obviously like didn't really know much about him. Then it was like a, a big southpaw. Big. He was bigger than me. That was yeah. like I'd never been like really faced with before. Big southpaw. So didn't really get get much sparring. And listen, I, again, I don't make excuses. It's, I'll fight whoever whoever's in front of me. It's one of them. You adapt in there, but it just wasn't the right preparation for that sort of fight. Mm-hmm. And Again, I just, it just, yeah, it was everything was going well. The first round I was doing, mm-hmm. doing what I do, kind of just sussing out, getting my jab going, in and got caught with a big left hand. Um, yeah, just obviously, I think just, just not switched on. Just head wasn't there, it wasn't switched on, and yeah, it was over. I got up, but still today on the fight, I said I would carry on. I got up and absolutely, on, but this is it. I would, uh, I would, I'd, yeah, I'd rather be flat on my back facing the, the sky than, <laughs> than be stop, stopped on my feet. But that's that's me. And listen, I'm here, healthy, laughing about it. So exactly, I can, I can, I can be thankful for that. But I would never ever want to end on on that sort of performance and that that being me. So, I, I, my, like I said, I've, I've achieved British Commonwealth. Southern area English like international belts too. I'd love to win the European title, and I believe I can. I can win that. I'd so I'd like to come back, and I know, like I know, I'm not just going to jump back in and be like, oh yeah, I'm fighting for this, mm-hmm. that, and the other. I'd, I've got to start sort of thing, work my way up again, and I think that's a challenge I'm looking forward to too. Like the new, mm-hmm. like the, the fresh, the young boys on the scene, and. I think I'm sure they'd think, oh, yeah, he's old, he's past it, he's been there, done it now. So <laughs> let of thing, them know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Look, looking looking for a name sort of thing on their record, but that's yeah. going to be the exciting thing too for me. Like it's going to be a, it's going to be a challenge because probably I will be going in the fights, most of the fights now as like the mm. underdog. Do you know what I mean? So, but like I said at the beginning, people soon forget and they soon realise obviously what what I'm all about and the levels I was mixing. Up and the, the levels I was at. Absolutely. At what stage in your career did you sign with Frank Warren? How far into your... At, into your... at the beginning. The beginning. Was, it the, was, was your pro debut? Yeah. yeah. Right, yeah. okay. I wasn't sure whether it was like second or third fight. So like that, yeah. that in itself is a big undertaking at that age and for your yeah. pro debut to be signing with such a big name. Yeah, definitely, yeah. I always, I always wanted to sign with Frank because I loved Prince Nazim and yeah. watching Prince Nazim and obviously... He was with Frank, and yeah, I always like, yeah, I always said that I was gonna. I think when I was like, I can't remember exactly how old I was. Only young. I got a picture somewhere. At, it was when Nasbox, uh, Tom Johnson. I was. I went to oh, the, yeah, the press yeah, conference. Yeah. I'm wearing, and I was like a little kid. And I got a picture of me talking to Frank, and then I remember that day. I was telling him I'm gonna sign with you. I'm gonna be pro. I'm gonna be a champion. Like, he just like tapped me on my head and was like, "Yeah, all right, son." And then, uh, yeah. It's one of them, but yeah. So I was glad I, I. Uh, did you I ever did say it to him that. then? Eventually, yeah, yeah, did you yeah, ever remind yeah, him? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I reminded him. So yeah. What did he but, say? Same thing. Just tapped me on my head. <laughs> <laughs> Said, "Yeah, all right, son." <laughs> I wouldn't expect anything less from him, to be honest. Yeah. But it's yeah. it's funny, you know, because like of all the guys from say your age group or and younger yeah. and a little bit older it's funny how everyone has the same idols do you know what I mean yeah Naz Ricky Hatton you know yeah. Mayweather it's it's yeah. funny it's 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 really great to like I suppose like look at how a small select few champions can inspire a whole generation of, of yeah. fighters you know what I mean it's brilliant definitely yeah yeah who else would have inspired you growing up um I I watched like my nan used to buy me the, these like old videos like and used to no get a, a used to get a magazine and a and a video with the mag a boxing magazine and a video I can't remember what it was called but yeah and then I used to watch like uh, Thomas Hearns a lot um, and then it was like when I first turned pro my manager Dean Dean Powell he uh, he was speaking to Emmanuel Stewart and Emmanuel Stewart 
he was saying, I've, I've got this uh, young kid who I've, I've just signed and he's he's d- doing well. I've, I've, I've had a couple fights in, I think, and even um, like Emmanuel Stewart, a great, oh, he he was, said, oh, that kid reminds me of a young Tommy Hearns. So, uh, wow. yeah, yeah. So that was like, oh my God, I can't believe that. Didn't really go on to be the Tommy Hearns, but there's still, <laughs> there's still time yet. Exactly, exactly. Is it is it as you expected it would be? You know, when you, before you turn pro and you're like, you get the contract, yeah. you, someone says, you know, it's Frank Warren, you're, you're like, oh my God, I've watched this for so many years. And then finally it's coming true and it happens. Is it as it, it felt back when you were young? Are you still there? I can think I can kind of hear you. Sorry, can you my, hear me? mine's a poor connection. And let me move. Yeah, I've got rubbish connection. Oh, there that. we go. It's, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah. But what was, I was saying is, is it, as, is it as you expected it when you were younger growing up, when you signed, when you got to the big stage and yeah. signed with Frank Warren and everything that goes with it, was it as you, as you thought it would be? It was a bit surreal, really, because, like, growing up watching these people on the TV and seeing seeing these, like, fighters on the TV and, obviously, Frank and everyone, and then being around them and being mm. part of it, it was just like, I don't know, it was like, yeah, I'm part of it now, this is this is me, this is... But that's what I always wanted to do, so I've only on, wanted to, like, box, and I've said from a young age, yeah, that's, that's what I'm going to be, that's what I'm going to do. So I was loving it because it was always what I, like, wanted to do so I think was I just, it overwhelming at the start was it a little bit overwhelming a bit because a, a few uh, Frank was with Sky Sports then and a few of yeah. my fights got filmed so I had some TV slots early on in my career so yeah that was like a buzz because that was like yeah like I'm on TV and it was like a big buzz so early on in my my career and then as time went on obviously Box Nation come and I was on Box Nation a lot and yeah, it was like uh, yeah, it was wicked, but it was something that I always wanted to do. So it was like I, I buzzed off it, you know. I, I just mm-hmm. I loved it. Yeah, it's like I love because um, I ask that question quite a bit, and I love the reaction that it gets because no matter how successful the fighter has been or is, you can still see it in their face, remembering yeah. that time, like why they got into it. You know what I mean? It's such a, yeah. it's it's. It's because boxing is one of those things that I don't believe that you can be a champion or that you can be the best unless you actually really love the sport. Of course, yeah, hundred percent. And then it's you've got to have that in you, and obviously, goes without saying the hard work and the sacrifices mm-hmm. you've got to make too. If you can't do that, it's just pointless. You're going to get nowhere. It's so it's so hard. You've got to sacrifice a lot, and the training like, to reach that level is like second to none you just gotta you just gotta be on it all day every day mm-hmm. when you say sacrifices what what do you mean by that uh a lot like friends for going out with your mates like generally mm-hmm. just out and about on the weekends or whatever um family things like birthdays christmases mm-hmm. every like loads of things like missing out on 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 things and that's the sort of sacrifices you got you gotta make and not to to not to miss birthdays to to miss, mm-hmm. do you know what I mean? Certain things, what's going on, and holidays, family holidays, and things like. If you have got a fight date and you're training, then obviously that's it's, it's, it's them sort of things you've got to sacrifice to 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 get the win and, and to train hard and, and get there. So, but listen, to get to the top and and to to get where you want to be and achieve what you want to achieve, they're the things you have to to sacrifice. So yeah, it is hard, but. It's it's worth it. Do you know what I mean? It's it's worth it in the end. Well, it, we, we, I definitely agree with you. I think for anyone that does anything that they're passionate about and they want to be the best at, you know, yeah. the sacrifices will definitely be worth it. Unless course, you, yeah. unless you're happy to do a nine to five, unless you're yeah. you're happy with that yeah. and you you want to do the nine to five and you're happy to go out on the weekends and people yeah. are and that makes people sometimes I always wish that I would be content with just having a regular job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or you know probably, being into rugby or golf or something it probably would have been yeah. a lot easier than like combat sports but here we I are I just like getting punched in my face <laughs> <laughs> and I like seeing people get punched <laughs> in their face 
<laughs> but you know, with, with anything, any business or, or any sports, uh, should I say, there is always the business side of it. Um, of and the business of boxing is like has been up for debate for so long, you know. And there's certain things about yeah. the sport that you know can't be helped. And you know, I yeah. think a lot of us wish they weren't like that. But yeah. when you look at your own career, is there anything that you would do different now that you look back? Uh, I wouldn't. Uh, uh, there is and there isn't. But I've had, looking back, I've had a good run. I've achieved some good yeah. things. So, I, uh, yeah, I would say I wouldn't say. No, I, you know, might change a few things, but I just I won't say. But yeah, <laughs> it's one. <laughs> it's one. Wait them. until but, you are actually uh, retired. Yeah, and you're yeah. Done. <laughs> there you go. But yeah, I, I would. But I wouldn't. Do you know what I mean? I've had a good run, and uh, yeah, I, I think. I think now is like I'm looking forward to what's next. Like might be a fresh, fresh new start, new change, like a change and like mm-hmm. a fresh start. Might be something new coming. Do you know what I mean? I, I, I just uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to to seeing what's next. What's been the highlight for you? Uh, winning the it British one title moment. was the British the most important. Winning, winning it, yeah, and then because that was like a, a big thing for me because. I was the away fighter. I was fighting Sam Egerton on on an Eddie Hearn show, so it was like a sort of rival promoter show, and it was it was on Sky, and it was a Sam was like smashing everyone. He was bowling yeah. everyone out. He was flying, and uh, yeah, I knew that was going to be be tough in itself. But then having to go go and do it in in Birmingham and away from home, and obviously everything was against me. Um, that 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 was a a big highlight in my career and then obviously not just winning it then winning it outright that was a, a mm. something I've always wanted to to have like I, the same like being a ch- British champion but to having it outright not many people can say they've done it so mm-hmm. to have that and to to always have that on my name do you know what I mean the British outright champion um yeah I'm buzzing with that that's that's a massive highlight for me definitely um Obviously, in the news this week, uh, we had a big announcement that um, Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury yeah. are going to fight next year. Allegedly, yeah. hopefully. Um, <laughs> yeah. What are your thoughts? Any comments on it? Yeah. That... Also, with that, we've also now heard today that Dillian White is planning on pressing charges with WBC yeah. for not getting his title shot. What do you think? Yeah, he's uh, the 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 Fury uh, AJ fight. That just that needs to happen. Do you know what I mean? It's like. Mm. The best be the best. It's it's that it's for all the belts. It be for all the belts. So it needs to happen, and it's massive for for Britain. So I, that yeah, if that goes ahead and that does happen, I definitely I'd love to be there to see it. Um, Do you feel bad for Dillian White? Then I say Dillian's like waiting. But he's been number one for I don't know how long. He's been waiting. He's he's turned to to get get the belt but it's mad the WBC is like a mad organisation because yeah. there's so many like rules and belts and they like chop yeah. and change people get emails and say they're champion and things like that it's like <laughs> yeah. they're not even boxed and they get a belt yeah. but yeah. I think I think what could happen what's happened before with the WBC like Fury get made the franchise champion and Dylan can mm-hmm. box I don't know for the for the for vacant like world title there's so many of them so they they could do that because that's been that's happened in the past so i think that would be the easiest option to do but i think now he's maybe going down the legal route and wants to sue them mm. it might not help him i don't i, I don't know how that's going to work you know yeah. i just don't know uh, it, he must yeah. have made a decision to be like screw the wbc I'm, i i i don't want to fight for them now and yeah. then he's like I, I mean i don't know I, I haven't been i have no inside source yeah. but it just seems like a strange one i suppose but I do yeah. definitely feel for him. And it's one of those things yeah. that, like, because when Dillian, um, Anthony, or um, Tyson fight, because it's such a big ske- spectacle and it takes months of preparation and months of planning <laughs> and all the money that's involved in this, it takes yeah. so much time. That's the one thing I miss about, like, you know, like, regional shows. Just jump in and have a knock and then it's that's up, it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Every couple of yeah. weeks it's done. But with, with obviously with that magnitude of a fight, it's it's yeah. not as easy as that, I suppose. They'll be waiting a long but, time. But um, 
they'll be waiting a while. That it'll be like twenty twenty three. That's for sure. But while we're talking, yeah. um, everyone has a chance to send in some questions. So I'm going to have a look now and see what everyone would like to ask you. Um. So Sam Marshall, twenty two, has asked, um, which of your wins was your favourite, and who was your toughest opponent? Uh, my, I think my best win was the Egerton win, definitely. Yeah, that was that was the Egerton. Uh, fight the toughest opponent. Um, I had a few, but I tell you, a fight that always sticks in my head being tough and was hard was my first fight with Pete McDonald. That was a tough, tough fight. It was in York Hall. It was sweltering hot. It was packed, and then yeah, it was ten rounds and. It was like, <laughs> he, he, he was like a veteran, wasn't he? He was, he'd yeah. been there, done it, got the t-shirt. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I was the young, yeah, fresh kid coming coming through, coming up. And uh, yeah, he gave me a tough 10 hard rounds. And that was like, welcome to professional boxing sort of thing. Love it. I think he's making a documentary or he's getting a documentary made on his life now. So uh, wicked. you could get a yeah, call. You could get a call for a, Maybe. a, 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 a quick little <laughs> excerpt. You never know. <laughs> he's a good man, Pete. He's a good man. <laughs> um, Sean O'Neill has asked um, uh, how do you say that Prince Nazim was an inspiration he's mine to what are some of his favourite fights that you've watched uh, I'd say the, t- uh, the Tom Johnson fight because I was there that was, the, that was one of the fights I was there I was watched uh, the f- he's had loads the Kevin Kelly fight was, was wicked um, yeah I didn't like seeing him get dropped in that but yeah, he got up to do to do the business, but yeah, he's had he's had so many, um, yeah, just so many wicked fights. But yeah, they're the two that stick out: the the Tom Johnson fight because I was there, and then the Kevin Kelly one. Have you ever met him? Yeah, yeah, loads. Yeah. Oh no way! Yeah, really? Yeah. What did you say? Yeah. I'm so jealous. Uh, what did you, you know say what? the first time when? you met him? I was uh, I don't know I can't, I can't remember all that. I just I think I was just starstruck, but. I tell you a mad story, um, how how we like met and sort of like, I wouldn't say like best friends, but become friends sort of thing. But I, oh, I no was, it was my fight with Frankie Gavin, and um, yeah. I just had the weigh in, and then this this mad number, I was on I was on the way back from the weigh in, and this mad number rang, and then I was like. I don't, I ne- everyone knows me, I don't never answer numbers, I don't know. If I ain't got your number saved in my phone, nine times out of ten, I'm not answering it. If you don't <laughs> ring and leave a message or a message and say, oh, it's blah, blah, you ain't getting a call back or I'm not answering the phone. <laughs> but anyway, just ask me, I thought, oh, do you know what, I might have, oh, I'll answer it. I answered it and then I, I, I recognised the voice straight away, but I thought it was someone winding me up. And he was like, yo, champ, you ready? I can't wait for tomorrow. Where, where, where? You're gonna smash it, this, that, and the other. And I was like, uh, "Hello, like, who is, who is this?" He's like, "It's Naz." I was like, "No." And then I was like, "No." And then it was the more and more he's talking. I was like, "It's him." Like, and then even then, I was like, "This is mad." I'm like, "I can't believe this is happening." He's just phoned me up to say, "Yeah, smash it tomorrow." He's coming down and all this, but I can't. Yeah, I, just, I, I, I would die. I would die. Yeah, and then um, I didn't think nothing. Not, like I. That obviously, the, obviously, the, I went on. And I've I've had a hundred calls that day, and the way it's done. And anyway, it's fight night now, and um, I I didn't forget about it because it's like Naz phoned me up to say good luck, so I'm like, oh, I'm buzzing. But anyway, obviously the fight nerves and everything. The day's gone on, and I'm I'm I thought I thought ah oh, maybe if he was here, we'd have come to the changing room or something. I don't I don't uh, maybe he's not here, whatever. Anyway, the fight's going on. And I'm thinking, yeah, it's yeah, like the fight's happening, and it's getting. I I can't remember exactly. I'd be lying if I said what round it was, but it's towards the end of the fight. It was towards the the like, like later rounds of the fight, and then I could just like see someone like jumping up and down like ringside, and then like I think there's like a break in the fight, and I looked, and it's nice, and like we made eye contact. He's like, yes, champ, yes, and then like, I just remember having a mad thing like. What the fuck? That's Naz cheering me on. Like, what's going on? Like, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. And then anyway, the fight ended. I lost, but I, I, I believe I won. A lot of people believe I won the fight. Anyway, that's going back a few years now. And then, uh, yeah, and then the day after, 
the same number phoned and it was Naz again who said, like, you got robbed, that's disgusting. Ah, oh, that's this, that, the other. And then, yeah, ever since that, like, I, I give him a call, you know, like, he give me a call, say, what's happening? And yeah, it's mad. So it's jealous. Mad. It's yeah. and like, like uh, it's, go on. Sorry, I, I train, I train a, a, a young kid coming up now, a Lightning Junior, Tony Curtis, yeah. He's a, he's a good kid coming through. Um, I do, I do, I train, I, I train him and that, and he's doing really well. And he, he's, he loves Naz too. He loves, loves him. And like I said, I said to him, he had a fight, his last fight. I said, you know what? I'll give Naz a call and uh, you can speak to him. Cause I know that how I was when I was his age and coming up through. And then um, I called Naz and then he didn't answer. I was like, fuck. Like of all the times I wanted that. The times, but then, yeah. Then he called back. <laughs> And then he spoke to him, and I, I just seeing his face. That's how I, I'm just looking back. I, that's how I would have been like when, yeah. when I, if I was speaking to him. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, t- still to this day, like he, he's still like he's still a legend, ain't he? He'll always be a legend, and kids totally. coming through. Do you know what I mean? You know who he is. So yeah, he's it's it's good. Totally, because that that's exactly what I mean. I mean. What we were talking about at the start is, of the interview as well is like, um, I put up a clip with Jamie Moore. Um, this morning I think and in it he's talking about always giving time back to kids because yeah. he remembers when he started out Nigel Ben was yeah. like someone who he looked up to and he took a lot of time out for him when he was watching him train one day do you know what I mean yeah. and it's like how it's funny how like the, the little things mean so much yeah. to kids or young people and how much you can kind of inspire people you yeah, know and for me with, with Naz and with Ricky Hatton in particular it brings me back to a time when I was sat watching boxing with my dad and with my granddad and yeah. watching Naz and watching Ricky Hatton and not understanding what was going on and you know what boxing was but just seeing Naz in his leather yeah. prints you know jumping that's over it. the ring and like it's, that's that's, it's those was. memories like, you know yeah the ring, the ring walks and like just how cocky he was and I was like, yeah. that's, I want, I, I want to do that. Like, that's what, how <laughs> yeah. I got into boxing. I was like, yeah, that's me. I want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so good. So good. Well, yeah. there'll be loads of kids that'll be like that with you as well. So uh, you can look forward to it. Look forward to it. <laughs> right, yeah. we'll take one more question and then I'll let you go. Cool. <laughs> That's right. Ron Richards. <laughs> hey, sniper. It, 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 is Le- oh, sniper. <laughs> Leron has asked, is Leron Richards still one of the best looking friends that you have? <laughs> uh, I don't know about that. He's getting old now. Nah, he's good. Me and Sniper is going way back. Uh, <laughs> he's good stuff. He's good stuff, Sniper. I had a lot of respect for Laurent until the point in the interview where he said that he wouldn't put pineapple on a pizza and then I just had to, that was it. Oh, is it? It was, oh, it was okay. over. It was over <laughs> after that. <laughs> tell, tell him, he ain't, if he's not got a, a haircut yet, he ain't that good looking. <laughs> <laughs> it's been in lockdown, no haircut. He's got that <laughs> afro comb combing it out. <laughs> it's been a while, it's been a minute, isn't that it? <laughs> um... So, very last question, and then I'll let you yeah. go back and join your evening. But um, Tommy Sweet has asked, uh, Bradley, hope you're okay. Hope all the family is doing well. And sorry if it's already been asked, but any ideas of when you will be back out? Do we have um, a timeline? Do you know what? I'll, I'll say it because it's been put out there. Eddie Young put it out there himself. Eddie Young messaged me uh, last week and said about Conor Ben fight. But of, it's just, he asked if I, I'd been training and I'd, I've, obviously, I've not been training for a fight, and he was saying about July, a date in July. Mm-hmm. But there's no no way I'd be obviously ready for that. Um, I've been out the ring like a year and a half, and not been in no sort of mm-hmm. camp. So to 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 train for that sort of fight um, is it was obviously unrealistic. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. Um, but now I know people's thinking of of them them sort of fights and. That's that uh, may obviously give me the kick up the ass. Do you know what I mean? So this lot. That's a that's is... a big fight, right? Like if that, yeah, that, if that even if that was happening down the line, that's a big fight. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. That's what I said. I said, listen, if it it's not going to happen in July, it's not realistic. I'm not going to be ready in July. But down the line, if that sort of fight can happen, that'd be massive. I'd like, like I'll be happy to like have that fight. That'd be that'd be a massive fight for me and for him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're the sort of fights. What I'm saying at the start, he's coming through, young, fresh, coming through. I'll be, a, I'll be a name for him to like 
former British champion, like Commonwealth champion, European uh, challenger. Do you know what I mean? They're the sort mm -hmm. of fights he needs to be fighting now and um, yeah. seeing that sort of if he's going to go on to achieve what he obviously wants to achieve to, to do that thing. But listen, I'm not, not just digging, like not digging him up, but not just pinpointing him, but they're the sort mm -hmm. of fights what, what I'd be excited for, do you know, to come back to, that's the sort of buzz, that's what I'd need, do you know what I mean? So, yeah, um, yeah so, but, and then on the other hand, it's like this, this whole lockdown thing and fighting, like, I don't know about, like, the, I know Eddie's doing shows um, in, the, in the garden and, and things like that, but I, that, that, I think that sort of fight would need a crowd, do you know what I mean? I'd love a crowd to be there to see it. Yeah, cause yeah. If I'm coming back, I know there's a lot of people want to come watch me fight. So I think um, more towards the back end of the year, I'd like to get out. Good stuff. You'll be yeah. you'll be ready to go. You'll be raring to go at I'll that be ready stage. To go. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely. Well, listen, thank you so much. Really appreciate the time. No worries. Uh, it was great to chat no to you. Worries. And uh, Wicked, yeah, thank looking you. forward to hearing um, when the next fight is announced and hopefully yeah. we'll see at the end of the year. Yeah, definitely have more interviews and everything going on. So I'd be happy to yeah. come on and do an interview again. Before I go, uh, just a yeah. young little fighter was saying about uh, like kids coming through and looking up to, to people. Uh, there's a young kid from Ireland, Patsy Joyce. Um, I've oh, seen, yes, I I've know. Him. He messages me every yeah. night. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he's, he, uh, I said I'd shout him out on this live, so there you are, Patsy, here's your shout out. He's uh, uh, obviously, you know him, he's six-time Irish champion, 33-0. They, they, don't, they don't come around too often, these sort of special kids. A lot of people are talking about him and, and bigging him mm -hmm. up, so I'm, I'm, I'm following him on all these social media now, so I'll be, I'll be keeping an eye out for him and hopefully uh, meet up with him one day. And yeah, he, and, uh, yeah so there's your shout out, mate. Yeah, amazing. Fair play to you. Fair play yeah, to you for doing wicked. that. He'll be no delighted. Runs. No but, runs. Um, and uh, no doubt it will be very soon and I'll have him on here. He'll be doing his own interview. It'll be, be, be bigging me up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it'll get, it be getting that big. you forget about me. Like, don't worry about him. <laughs> nah, He'll be like, I remember, when, I remember when this guy, Bradley Ski, actually checked me out. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he's a good kid. He seems a good kid. He messages me all the time. He's a good, seems a good yeah. kid. And I don't know if Lightning's watching, he'll probably see this, but it's his birthday Thursday, so happy birthday for Thursday, bro. And I'll catch up with him uh, soon. <laughs> whose birthday is it on Thursday? Uh, the young kid I was saying, Lightning Junior. Oh, happy yeah. birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Hope you have a great birthday. How old is he, do you know? He's going to be 14. Oh, what an age. I can barely remember. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to be fighting again, starting. Yeah, again. <laughs> God, like it's so it's, it's so long ago for me. I can yeah. barely remember twenty four. <laughs> never mind fourteen. <laughs> but um, listen, Bradley, thank you so much. I really Wicked. appreciate it. And thank hopefully, you. we do get to do a proper interview down the line um, when we're all back yeah. to to normal and and all that kind of stuff. So I look forward to it. And cheers, thank you. Thanks, Bradley. Talk to you soon. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. -bye.